this is the Crappie Connection brought to you by Visit Ridgeland, Bobby Garland Bates, Anderson Minnow Farm, Power Crappie, Redneck Rubber, b and Poles, K9 Fishing, Camp Shelf, Cornfield Fishing Gear, Jenko Fishing, Denali Rods, The Direction TV, I Hold Jigs, Top Hat Jigs. What's up, guys? Brad Chapel here, Crappie Connection at the Grizzly Jig Show 2022. So, I got some guys next to me that's going to kind of help you out on selecting gear and installing the right way on your fishing boat. Who's this fella? I'm Lance Mansfield. I work here at Grizzly Jig. I install stuff every day, 24-7. Um, I mean, everything's getting crazy now. Everything's evolving. It's and you got it. This, this technology is getting so sensitive to everything you really got to watch what you do and watch how you mount it because any little mistake you can actually screw yourself up so <laughs> um they can talk about it. he knows a lot what's going yeah. on man? yeah I, i'm andrew lamar i work for cornfield fishing gear and i deal with a lot of the customer service mm -hmm. and uh, there's so many different boats out there and people need to know the difference between fiberglass boats aluminum boats and how to rig it and how to rig it safely well that's kind of the you know the subject line we're going for i i've seen so many times through the years that a guy about uh, amount let's say and it's totally the wrong one mm -hmm. and then they got to worry about trying to ship it off or yep. sell it again yep. or I, I think people get in a rush sometimes well, i get a lot i know you probably do too well this is one that my buddy used in his boat but he's got a 21 foot glass boat you're fishing to have a 16 foot boat i don't see how that's going to work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's what he uses so that's what they want yeah you know, or they see these guys on youtube or the pro guys like i want what he's got well, you don't got the same boat as him, so it's not quite going to yeah. work. But we'll get something that'll fit you the best. Well, I, when I hear you, I was going to say, when I hear YouTube, I cringe. Right. People try to put stuff on YouTube and start a trend, so they trend to make money. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all got to realize that. So all those guys saying they're doing this certain thing and how to do this, it's like they're trying to do some groundbreaking stuff. They don't make a video of how they burnt this up or it mm -hmm. didn't work. They had to get new batteries or they shorted this and that out. They don't make those videos. So the more of them you watch, you just just need to talk to somebody that actually knows face to face. They can show you some stuff. What some of the differences when you consider an amount and uh, compared to an aluminum boat versus a fiberglass? I know that we touch on that on the end with Andrew, but each one of you guys kind of tell your opinion on what do you need to look for if you've got a say a fiberglass boat and if you've got an aluminum boat. Yeah, there's definitely some things you can't do on aluminum boats that you can do on fiberglass boats. I think fiberglass boats, in my mind, have a broader range of rigging, mm -hmm. and I make it. I ain't, I ain't saying nothing. I, it's just some make it a lot easier. How about that? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you got as far as structure and sound, how what boat, how it's made, what kind of like hardware you got to use to to mount it down and make it solid. Some of them you have to do, you almost have to do twice as much to a smaller boat mm -hmm. than you do a glass boat because they are they are most of them are made very well, and. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, a lot of them aluminum boats on the front deck, they got they got channels running, and yeah. you got to make sure you don't hit one of them so you can get a back plate under it or lock nuts or something. Because yeah. if you have a bigger base on an aluminum boat, it's not going to flex your deck near as much if you had a smaller point. Yeah, like a smash point. I know I did an uh, install video on installing a mount, a double mount on a War Eagle, and, and I'm sure <laughs> he's laughing. And I was crying. I mean, literally, that was the... And I've installed all kind on mm -hmm. fiberglass boats, and I was thinking, man, it shouldn't be that big a deal to put this on this War Eagle. Yeah. Um, and War Eagle. God. <laughs> I'm friends with War Eagle. They make a great product. Oh, it's like a tank. It, it holds its value. They're great boats that last forever. Everybody wants one. Uh, 
But yeah, some things, war eagles are kind of fun sometimes. I can tell you that. Yeah. yeah. I started to bring it up here. <laughs> like, if we get Lance to help me out with this but thing. A lot of guys are by the duck, duck boats. Mm -hmm. Duck boats geared more to the duck hunter. You're just doing what you can to turn into a fishing boat also. Yeah. And they don't leave you. It's, it's a great product. They're great boats. Uh, I state the, the sizes they could get in that duck model is a lot cheaper than actually their, the focused crappie boats because it's two totally different type of builds. They help you in, in the crappie boat line, but the other line, which is probably bigger, is the duck boat line. Yeah. And they're not worried about the fish. They're making yeah. this thing to freaking duck up. Yeah. It's all as, as, as a yeah. tank. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, throw your decoy bags in the bottom and go. With a fishing <laughs> boat, when you got put a mount on it and everything like that, there's a lot more strain on that floor. Yeah. And it, it's... It takes your time. It takes a lot of time to install it, right? Yeah, I definitely figure that out. And it's—I mean, there's all companies, especially the aluminum boat lines, that are—they mm -hmm. ha basically have a—they're geared. They have these boat models that are geared for duck hunting. Then these boat models, they have geared for crappie fishing or just fishing in general. And uh, so it's all, I mean, it's all the companies. It's just—they're mm -hmm. not going to help you out much on the rigging process if it's a duck boat designed for yeah. a duck hunter. Yep, yeah, exactly. What about? Um, let's go through selecting tools even i know you know you've got some specialty tools that you need mm -hmm. to keep in mind whenever you're getting ready to install things yeah. what are some of the guys out there what do they need to prepare to do a install in a boat i think tools Go ahead. um you're obviously gonna need a drill to drill your holes mm -hmm. and you're gonna need the right anchors so if you're doing an aluminum boat like i was saying earlier you need to have something on the bottom side to sandwich that deck with that mount because otherwise it's going to flex or it's going to pull them screws out with a fiberglass boat, you can get away with not having an anchor on the back because it's going through an inch or so of fiberglass. But other than that, you need a drill, a good impact wrench or something like that, and and the right and the right hardware to get through everything and sandwich it together or make it all tight. Definitely. This, the, <laughs> I feel like to me, to me, the best tool, and it took me a few years to figure it out, is a lot of times you can't get to where you're at, yep. and you've got to go a certain distance through that area. Yep. I finally figured out how to drill like five foot through the boat to get to the spot where everything's got to come down instead of, mm -hmm. you know, to me that having to figure out that part of it as far as, you know, drilling all the way through without having to get up in there is. So really. Uh, can't tell you my secret, so I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so would you really advise to take it to a professional installer or, or it just kind of depends on that boat? I mean, you got to realize if, if you install stuff wrong and you watch YouTube too much, you can't break everything. <laughs> YouTube bad. Include my mic. YouTube bad. <laughs> yeah. well, I can fix it. I got the right tool. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, you know, I think a lot of guys that get in a rush and they buy a new boat, brand new, used, what have you, they get a new boat and they just want to get it ready to go fishing. Yeah. And and, and then they make the mistake of just buying something to get by. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, well, it's not heavy duty enough mm -hmm. for all the op applications that they're going to put that boat through. Yeah. And so they're going to get, well, you know, I'm going to save a couple bo bucks if I if I do it this way, and it winds up costing them in the end. And that's it, always it, been in my experience looking at people's boats. Is, man, you, you've got a, a $30,000 boat here, and you've got 5000 And they go to Lowe's and buy some number eight screws. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. even stainless steel, and mount on the boat. The next thing you know, they got big, huge holes protruding out because it just flopped on over. And it could go off the side of the boat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or right, down the highway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely be a lot worse. <laughs> if both of them's happened, I know. Oh, no doubt. What about trolling motors wise? What are some things that somebody needs to consider whenever they're getting ready to, to even install trolling motors? Ready to install a trolling motor? Mm -hmm. As far as choosing a trolling motor, mm -hmm. I it's you, you could never go wrong getting too big. Yep. Going too small is the problem. But if you go too big, you can never have enough trolling motor. You, you can vouch for that on the tournament Absolutely. trail and guiding yep. every day. You know, pull it because you're a long line. Yeah. Pull a long line, you get a 19 foot boat with a 55 pound thrust to rover, probably going to have an issue. Yeah. Uh, but no, all these trolling motor, the trolling motors are getting so advanced and they're all great products. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, just keep in mind you, you want to be able to have whatever you have, you want to be able to max it throughout the day because weather conditions and not having time to go fishing. I want when I get there, I want to be able to fish, fish comfortable and not have any worries. Right. Yeah. But mounting them there again, just like any the mounts and everything. Mm -hmm. Location, thickness, boats, you know, you just got to watch what you're mounting on. Even though you think it's aluminum, it's only like tenfold on top sometimes with a board, but you don't know it for a fact. So you screw them in without any kind of back or anything, and, you know, it can pull right out. Yeah, most most aluminum boats, they're made out of less than a sixteenth inch aluminum, 
and and you can't screw nothing to that it'll pull out what about like uh as some of the accessories you're getting ready to just put a forward facing sonar on a, a trolling motor what are some of the accessories that a guy needs to really think about putting on that trolling motor to do that sonar yeah well, one thing at, at Cornfield Fishing Gear, we make a we make a wire puck, and it allows you to drill an inch and a half hole to run your pan optics wire, mm-hmm. all your units, all through one hole in a nice a nice cup that covers it and makes everything come out of the same hole. Cleans up the front of your boat immensely. Yeah, that's that, that's a great product. I use it tons now because they, as ele- electronics have evolved, my hole used to, I never drilled a hole that's bigger than one inch mm-hmm. as far as mount you know mounting and getting the wires through. I mean now you're making holes inch and a half yeah yeah for, for, for a little for, shy of two inches yeah, yeah for a pan optics for the garmin it's the the plug that runs the black box and back up to the unit it's it's an inch and a quarter so you need that big hole to push that cable through like cable savers i mean i, I know originally people were using like zip ties and different things like that mm-hmm. and right right yeah them cable savers we made them that was actually our first product we made them because people have like the total scan sonars on the bottom of their trolling motor and they'll pull it in, and they'll want to have that wire tight, and it'll, it'll, when you fold that trolling motor in, it'll get pinched, cut that wire, ruin that transducer. And we made ours. I did with, that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got one back here right now. The shop I did it. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that at Hamilton, uh, a buddy of mine fishing with me. And first spot, we were pre-fishing for our tournament mm-hmm. at the expo. First spot we checked, threw down the trolling motor, decided to change, and he just went up there and pulled it up. It's yep. not the cable. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, right off the bat. Yeah, it we, hurts nowadays, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we use a cut-proof cable and, and, and two brackets that hold it, and mm-hmm. there's nothing. You can you can tie that thing between two trucks and pull it, and you won't break our cable. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. And actually, I sell tons to me. I mean, it's, it's the best company, the same problems. And they said, hey, this this gentleman didn't even do fishing stuff. Mm-hmm. They, he liked to fish, and people were complaining, like, no, Tarovas, Alteras, any of that's strictly like going through the drive housing, yep. up top to bottom. There was an issue. It needed to be, I mean, it was not going to work with, you're going to start cutting out trolling motors. So, of course, there was a need. He made that. Then now he's living on Kentucky Lake, dang near doing all fishing stuff. So, yep. That, yep. that was big time right there. Yeah, I work in a machine shop there, and I do 95% of my work is cornfield fishing gear products. Well, I just think of some of these accessories that, you know, guys are kind of overlooking that don't have that experience. Or even their friends to tell them, hey, man, are you putting that on your boat? Go ahead and consider. What are some of those products that kind of come to your mind that a guy needs to look at? I know Cable Saver has to come in mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cable Saver comes to mind. And like he was saying, with the Altera and the Tarova trolling motor, everything's through shaft. Mm -hmm. And and we're the only ones on the market that is able to – that allows you to mount a forward-facing sonar onto one of them motors Mm -hmm. with our pan optics mount. And some people, they'll buy that pan optics not knowing, yep. and they'll get it. It's like, oh, that's not going to work on our trolling motor. Or they come back with the cut cable. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. 80% of the time, I guarantee you, I'll see them on a the cut cable. Yep. Yeah. So take your time on, 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 especially a new trolling motor on the cable stuff, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, do do's a little bit of research because I don't, I don't want to replace a $1,500 cable. No, especially on the live now, it's $1,500. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did it. Stuff's got, <laughs> so, stuff's got so crazy, man. We're involving in crappie fishing all the time, you know. Now, I mean, now some of the bass guys are looking at some of these pro oh, yeah. crappie fishermen that, that fish because yep. they're looking for fish this big. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're looking at some places like you fish up north to Mark Twain or something. I mean, you got a pound fish. That's, that's a tournament fish right there. Mm-hmm. You know, you get six pounds that win. So it's a lot harder. So we have to dial ours in a lot more. Wouldn't that be seven pounds? No, I've only got six and a half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that got me fist. Way one with like seven, one or something. Anyway, we're not talking about that. <laughs> Shh, damn. <laughs> I could help it. Anyway. How can they reach you down here? Uh, so you can go on our website at cornfieldfishinggear.com. You can reach out to us on Facebook at Cornfield Fishing Gear or call our shop phone. It's 217-304-1680. I got him thinking there. All right, Lance, how can they reach you? Uh, you just call Grizzly Jig, 1-800-301. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, think I can Turner, right you number. might have to edit that a little bit, brother. <laughs> um, yeah. one 800 Three zero five nine eight six six vapor lock for a minute. We think those are the right numbers. That should be anyway. Yeah. Just we'll, we'll put them on the screen. Enough. How about that? Yeah. We'll, we'll put them on the screen for. Or, or don't call eight hundred number three 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 nine eight six six. It's pretty. 
accurate. all right guys i appreciate you coming on the show hey put us some comments on there on suggestions for somebody that's just getting started and and putting accessories on their boat mm-hmm. both these guys are willing to help you so if you got some questions give them a call and uh, i know they'll lead right. you in the right direction and stay off youtube <laughs> well, no, they got to watch us too, now. Like. I know that, but I'm talking about for vision, like oh, okay. technical okay, stuff. Okay. Till next time, like, subscribe. We'll see you later. Yeah, got... it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Who? And I'm Andrew Lamore. Hi. Right. You forgot a, forgot his name. I'm no, Lance Mansfield. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Chapel. Till next time. Holla. See you guys. Deuces. Big muddy river, place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel.